guys, what's up and welcome to Young Titan World. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. God's amazing and we've got ourselves a new day. Uh, today, I believe I've already reached my quota for what I wanted to talk about. I mean, as far as TV series goes, I have no problem with watching them. As long as they have something that I want. Most of the time, it's fantasy, you know. It comes with a little bit of pizzazz, the magic, the powers, the the fighting. Especially the fighting sometimes, you know. Because who doesn't love it when you get punched in the face and they're like ripples in the air when that happens? Also, by the way, it's not, it's nothing to worry yourself about. I'm pretty sure it's just someone who's got a diabetic shock again. It seems to be a similar or persistent problem that happens around here. You have the most advanced and the most sick all in one place. Odd, isn't it? Um, anyways, who would have thought that me walking through these streets, I believe it was in January, that someday I'd be staying here. God is amazing. He truly is amazing. I duh. What will, what will he do next? Oh, he's got me another job. He's got me another job. He's got me a better place than the last time. I have to say, I, I got, <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about a movie. Because I watched one, didn't I? Uh, no, it's psych. It's not a movie. It's just mainly been about... <laughs> I don't know. My mind? I know maybe you were expecting a movie of some sorts, but as far as I'm concerned, I only get to do that once a day. The rest of it is either what I think about my situation or some other piece of info that I don't get to share around that much. Uh. Gosh, I am really puckered out. Uh, anyways, I really want to have something to talk about, but it doesn't seem like anything is coming to mind. Uh, I had to make some separations today. Much more like, I had to cut some people out of my life. It wasn't the best thing, or it wasn't, it felt terrible, honestly. And every part of me would want to just run back to them and apologize that I ever left. That's what I want to do. But I can't do that. Because it's a decision that's necessary. And it's not about them taking you for granted or them treating you lower than you deserve, but it's it's about a line being crossed. It's like, uh, you and I both know what it means to be loyal to a friend of yours or to respect them, you know? If that respect is taken away, it can be treated as a slave or anyone with lesser value. I want a friendship without trust or respect. 
Unless, of course, you're like besties and you can throw friendship, you can throw respect out the window. But even with that, there is a level of respect for the disrespect. When it's limitless, it tends to cause a problem. Obviously, it, it can sound like one is being too sensitive or being a baby about it. None of you out there have to tolerate things or tolerate bullshit because you don't want to be, you don't want Go ahead. What am I talking about? I'm sure it's a valid thing that you want to say, but it's not coming to mind. Anyone can tolerate the bullshit that you have. So. But unless, of course, they're willing. If you can't stand someone's bullshit, please don't be there. Don't waste your time trying to tolerate something that was not meant for you. Most of the time we take ourselves for granted. We think that the more we do, the more others would want to do stuff for us. If you sacrifice for your friends or if you take something that is valuable and give it to them, they are supposed to treat you in the same way. More often than not, that is not the case. And you rather end up losing a piece of yourself because you assumed too much. You looked at them and you saw an opportunity where they would also be a part of your life. But that was also a lie. In that instant, you told yourself that it was possible that they would do the same for you. They would sacrifice for you. But it doesn't work out that way. The reason why I have lesser friends is not because I'm a hard person to get along. It's also not because I don't choose to socialize. But it seems like every time that I'm outside, I can read energy. It's weird. I know it's crazy. I see your energy. It's weird. I see some other energy and it's calm. And I make decisions as to what exactly those energies make me feel. More often than not, some of them are mixed. You know, some of them burn bright the first time you see it. And as time goes on, it wanes, becomes lesser and lesser until well, a different flame takes its place. And then I don't know what to do with that because I'm reading a different energy. And different energy means a different person. You might call that ridiculous. What the hell are you talking about? But I know in my heart that I never want to have to make a decision based on just seeing a person at face value, making a decision as to whether that person is a good person or not. You're going to have to give me like a five minute break. I'm going to have to do some shopping. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well, that's like five minutes of my life I can't take back. Have you ever seen a pregnant lady and wanted to punch the tummy? Yeah, I know that sounds diabolical, but that, that just flew across my mind the moment I passed her by. So I'm wondering, am I a crazy person or, or is it just part of the whole deal as being human, controlling your urges and not giving to everything? But I got to say, like, you know, those are both impulses, right? But the impulse to have sex is not the same, right? I mean, there, there is one that is ethically and morally just suicidal. There is no one on this earth who would recommend you punching a pregnant, a pregnant lady in the stomach, right? But it's not the same with sex, right? Uh, when you're, when you're on the verge of giving in to that desire, it's not like someone's gonna be like, Oh my God, Sam, there is no way on this earth that anyone will want you to do that. In fact, seems like guys are encouraged to have sex and be good at it. Because if they're not, chances are they have a zero chance of having a successful sex. So. Wait, shush. Got that, wait. Yeah, I'm 
You know, next time I'm probably I'm gonna touch the bread by myself. I feel like when you don't touch, they give you the dry shit. And I am not a fan of the dry shit. You're never a fan of anything, Sam. Anyways, as I was saying, the world will not hate you if you give in to the desire to have sex. But, and this is a big but, they will hate you if you punch a pregnant woman in the stomach. And maybe to answer all of your other questions, no, I don't know if I have ADHD. No, I don't know if I have autism. As far as I can tell, all of those things require tests and seeing a therapist, both of which I've done neither. You know, so let's just assume that I don't have it. And all of this is because of my poor attention to probably, I don't know, detail. Yeah, because that's, that's pretty much me, you know. I don't really give a shit about detail, do I? Well, I mean, that's contradictory. Sometimes I just go down a rabbit hole and make sure that I say everything that it needs to be said about a particular topic. Other times, I just like, I don't know, I want to end the conversation quickly, so I just like, yes, I agree. Then I'm shutting up. Um, but I got to say, in my position, most of the time, I try to understand why people can look you in the eye and take advantage of you. Honestly, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. Maybe it's only a big deal when it comes to me. You know, when it comes to the fact that, oh no, they're doing it to me. When it's doing it to somebody else and I'm not affected, I probably will find it funny. I find it hilarious or thrilling, but it's not right. I can imagine that you'd be laughing at someone because they found themselves in such a scenario. And then you realize that you yourself are in that situation. It's kind of like fun. It, just imagine this. Imagine that you and your best friend. <laughs> imagine you and your best friend were making fun of this made up character. A character that was going to be super loyal and super supportive. They were going to give everything they could while you benefited from it, but you never gave them anything in return. The person is doing it because they want to establish a relationship with you. They want to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. And you and your best friend laugh at this made up character, right? You create this scenario. It's funny because the person is never gonna get what he wants from you. And he's never gonna be able to reach that level with you. But he's gonna give you all the things you want, but he's never gonna get anything, right? It's funny. <sighs> and a couple of, let's say, months later, you are the person. What's that? A couple of months later, you realize that, huh, it's, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Because you're the person in the shit now. You're the person who's giving everything. Or you're getting nothing in return. While your soul is getting sucked right out of your body, you have no say whatsoever. And you just hope to God that you die quickly. Because the embarrassment on your soul is so hard, it could choke you. I just want to say to everyone that 
feels like they need to give something in a relationship in order to feel like they belong. But maybe you don't need to be in there. If you need to offer yourself over and over again and they do nothing in kind, just don't, all right? Trust me, it's not a bridge you want to cross. If you want to go down that path, fine, that's up to you. At least you know what you're in for. And maybe it's what you want to happen. But I know some of you out there kind of put sacrifice in your relationships because you hope you're going to get something in kind. You give and you give and you give. You give so much and you think to yourself, well, I've done the Lord's work. There is no way that after everything I've sacrificed, they're gonna leave me. Well, think again, because your favors or your sacrifices might mean little to nothing to those people. And it's all in your head. And when that day comes, it will cut you like a knife. And you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Save yourself the drama. I know solitude seems like the worst thing in the world. But trust me, making it out on your own is probably the best way to evolve. Being able to handle your demons by yourself, not needing to bring a third party into the mix is so much better. If you're able to establish strength in solitude, it wouldn't matter what happened around you. Trust me. It wouldn't matter if the people that you trusted most turned against you. It's because you know deep down inside you, you have that code to walk alone, to be by yourself. It's, it's, it's the, when they tell you strength in numbers, it doesn't mean that each and every single or each and every individual is, is weak. All right. I mean, like, is strong. Yeah. When you go in the crowd, it's easier for them to like not target you, you know, but when you're by yourself, everyone's targeting you. You're an easy target. They can single you out and take you down easily. Also, when you're by yourself, you're not going to be loose. You're going to have to thicken your hide, make yourself stronger in order or to turn things around for your favor because no one else is going to do it. And if you don't, well, you pretty much just signed yourself up to just die. So, trust me when I say this. Try and make it about yourself. Try and be selfish. There are those few moments where being together sounds like a great idea. Where being part of a team sounds like you fulfilled your life's mission. But it doesn't work like that. If it did, maybe none of them would be able to make a difference. I can understand that. Every single part of this journey, every single lesson you learn, it sticks a whole lot longer when you're by yourself. You will not take it for granted. You will not take the life you have for granted. So, Maybe you'll understand one day. 
or maybe you won't. Sometimes we can all be handed the same kind of lessons to learn, but we all don't learn it. Some of us are too lazy. Some of us don't see the opportunities in front of us. Some of us spend too much time looking at other people's problems, just being experts at other people's business rather than our own. It's amazing, isn't it? Instead of focusing on what matters to you and how to make yourself a better person in this world, you choose to focus on others who couldn't give a rat's ass about you. Inspectors of the unnecessary, detectives of nothing. It would make much more progress in this life of yours if you chose to focus on the things that matter to you. Now, as much as possible, if you've ever, if you watch any of my episodes, you'd either notice that I try to limit the God talk from everything, because I feel like everyone's entitled to their opinion and I cannot shove my beliefs down your throat. If any case, I want the opposite, where you would want to know more about what I have to tell you. Now, in this situation where you're growing as a person, whatever that you believe in, that vested interest, that desire to follow your beliefs, to follow your religion, is also important. Maybe some of them will decide to put all the pieces together, be in every religion. But that would be problematic, wouldn't it be? Because each religion has its own rules. Each and every religion has its own counterpoint. Like, uh, first time I heard about Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, I was thrilled for them because in their afterlife scenario, when you die, there is no hell. You just cease to exist. First time I heard about it, I was psyched. I was like, oh my gosh, let's get that religion, people. Well, if I do shit like a shit ton of bad, there is no way. <laughs> There is no way there's going to be any hellfire. Because as far as I was concerned, when I was in Sunday school, doing bad meant you were in the league with Satan. And Satan was going to be chilling out in that hot pool of lava for eternity. And that guy, he probably has built some resistance to that shit. I ain't even touched hot water before. Chances are, <laughs> I'm going to be screaming and he's going to be popping like freaking popcorn when I'm screaming my ass out. So I guess you could say that it's not exactly a, a thrilling moment for me if I die and go to hell. It's like, you know, sin is not something that you can avoid, like, I don't know, jumping over a hedge or something. There are so many things that are sinful. Dead cats everywhere. Is someone killing the cats over here? Because I keep seeing dead cats, man. It's just, it's just plain as day, man. I, I choose to believe that you know, the religion that you're believing in is obviously something that you have understood its principles. You've seen what it offers you and you're chasing after it with your own will. Most of the time, when we come to the Christian religion, 
or you come to a Christianity itself, some kids are born into Christianity. They don't know what triggered their parents to go into this religion or if it was something that was happening and since everyone was doing it, your parents got involved. Or it's just another, you know, publicly acknowledged uh, moral thing to do, you know. Everyone's Christian, so I got to be Christian too. What is Christianity about? Bibles, heaven, that's it, right? No one understands the values. Or at least more of, most of them are just there because Sunday is a whole lot more boring when you're staying at home. That is if you're not like in the working class. Or you have an irregular work schedule and Monday, Sunday mornings seem to be like a moment where you want to just, you know, have a chat with a couple of friends so you hop on to church, right? But that's the thing. Some of these kids don't understand the values and they don't even, they don't even sit down. It's like, you know, when you go to school and you spew out everything that you've learned, some people really don't learn shit. They just, they poured it out of their brains because you wanted them to. Not because they understood or because they are interested in what you're saying, but because they don't want to get whacked by that belt or beaten or mocked or just as to that because they want people to know them and acknowledge them, you know? And that, and that's what makes me question them because if that's the case, then probably the youth, the little kids that go to Sunday school and everything, they're not going to take all of those pieces of messages that you're telling them to learn and at face value. They're going to throw it away. They're just going to do it because you told them to. And that's just fucked up. Time goes on. And people don't end up becoming the same way that they were supposed to be. That's dead cat number two. Wow. Anyways, all I just wanted to say is that maybe you, rather than just letting them take in all those pieces of information without any context, maybe try and let them understand what they're doing. Sometimes you need to sit them down, not let them recite those chapters. Let's trust me. They can recite every chapter you want. When it comes to the time where their brain decides to kick in and take charge, you're going to wish you had those talks with them. Acting or just pretending that there's nothing wrong, that your kids go to, go to church every Sunday or to read the Bible in front of you all the time. It doesn't mean anything. It means absolutely nothing. Because in that situation, to them, they just know that is what you'd love to hear. Them walking up and down the stairs in the church, saying all these lovely passages, discussing the benefits of the chapter that they read. You know, just being all aglow for Jesus. And then when the night comes, they come too. They know all the clubs in their area. They're more conversant with the nightlife than you are. That duality. And for some reason, some of them think of it as legitimate. Who doesn't like a little bit of spice in their lives? It's not like they're doing anything boring. It's interesting, right? Same thing as like 
fucking another person behind your spouse's back. Some people would find a thrill from doing that. You can call it all sorts of bad words, man, but still people do it. Still people crave the drama. It excites them. It gives them meaning and purpose. They have the opportunity to go from one person to another because they have the power, their beauty, their handsomeness can demand it. But it ends, you know? It's not forever. Because if it was forever, it would be boring, wouldn't it? Having what you wanted because of what your face looks like. Kind of messed up. But the truth, nonetheless. Well, anyways. I'm tired out. Half of the shit that I said right now, I probably won't remember it. Or focus on it. Because as much as I'd like to say that I, I keep track of the things that come out of my mouth, I do not. I, this is me just speaking my mind and everything that comes with it, it could be with a pinch of salt. So be warned. Other than that, I'd like to say a very big thank you to everyone that listens to me. I hope you guys take care of yourselves and have a great day. I hope you guys take care of yourselves. Until the next one. Young Titan out. Thank you for listening.